people. <laughs> 389. All right, guys, very recently we've been building race trucks, and I have my Cummins cart, which is a single turbo nitrous with a big external wastegate, and I had to tune that thing in. <laughs> We also have the Junker drag truck which is making its return, which is a small turbo on the manifold, an HV351, and a big 488 for the atmosphere charger. And so we need to tune that wastegate as well. We logged a bunch of runs. We log the data and I want to show you what we found out so you can take this information to your trucks and tune in your systems for optimal performance. All right, let's go to the computer, pull up some runs and take a look here. I'm going to start with the Junker drag truck because that's an internal wastegate turbo, which is going to be way more relevant to way more people. Not a lot of you guys have external wastegates. Let's start with the internal wastegates. I have three dyno runs pull up here from the Junker drag truck. The turbo system on this consists of one of our aggressor 6267 modded HV351s, also one of our aggressor 488s. So on these three runs, we have three actually pretty radically different wastegate settings. This one here, just the dots, has the gate opening very early and very far, so it dumps a bunch of energy into the low pressure turbo, the big turbo. These two here, even though they're very similar in their power of curves, are actually a pretty big difference in their wastegate settings. So even though it looks similar here, let's, let's start looking at uh, the boost numbers. That'll start telling a, a, an interesting story. This is the boost curves of these dyno runs. This here is the dots, which corresponds with the uh, dotted run here. This is the wastegate opening the most. The middle dashes is the wastegate opening the middle amount. That corresponds up here. And the biggest dash is the wastegate opening the least. What's interesting here is obviously the dots, is we can see it's opening way early, and that's why we have this really lazy power curve. The power curve carries well, but it's pretty lazy down here. I would give up this for this huge chunk any day. What's really cool is this section here. So the power, like it's identical basically, but you can see in this data that we have the long dash is at 71 PSI and the short dash is at 60. So we're 11 PSI less in this in this run, but the power curve is identical. That seems really counterintuitive. How do you how do you make more boost but not pick up any more power? We've kind of been over this before, but drive pressure is an often overlooked uh, number, which is very, very important because turbo is all about ratios. You you multiply the atmosphere as a ratio. You have a ratio of your boost to drive pressure. Everything's ratios in turbo. So let's pull up the drive pressure right now. Drive pressure is in red. Again, all the graphs are corresponding dots to dots, dash to dash, long dash to long dash. Can you see where the wastegate opens? This is very apparent in the drive pressure because that's exactly what's being affected when the wastegate opens. We drove this and it actually went pretty well. Like on the street, you wouldn't realize how lazy this was until you got into this one here. Then like, okay, I was really missing out something. But it wasn't like it was a dog because it's a a 351 turbo, it's not terrible. You just don't know what you're giving up until you ride it a properly uh, adjusted wastegate setting. So the wastegate opens way down here, drive dips a little bit and just kind of hangs out down here. This is where it's starting to drive uh, the big turbo. As soon as that wastegate opens, you're dumping a bunch of that energy right to the large turbocharger. In an internal wastegate, it's just bypassing the turbine of the little one, going right into that exhaust pipe, hitting that big turbocharger. So right here is starting to drive the big turbo harder. The goal in wastegate tuning is to drive the big charger when it will work. You can dump all the energy to the big charger early, but if it's not enough energy and volume and heat and velocity, it's just not gonna drive it, it's gonna be lazy. So your goal is to create enough energy in the system with the small turbo to when you're ready to dump it, it's just gonna be a smooth transition right into that big turbo and it works awesome. Uh, you don't wanna hold too much in a small turbo because it's gonna result in more EGT, higher heat, uh, pumping losses. It's just not as reliable. The power may still be there, but I'd way, way more prefer a balanced system than one that's just making a ton of extra heat. So in the second run here, we see we held the gate closed quite a bit longer. It just, it just stayed better. And when we opened it, Sure enough, drive pressure just dropped like a rock. You can see it falls like crazy, and this is going right into that turbocharger, the big turbo now, and it just carried well. It didn't hurt anything. It, actually, when we dumped, the short dashes start to pull away. So this means we're in a pretty good spot here. It's going up nice and smooth together. 
but then it pulls away a little bit because we're driving that big charger better. We're dumping drive instead of pumping losses. All this huge drive pressure here is a lot of pumping losses. We don't have that here. So even though our boost is lower, the ratio is better. And that's the real key is the ratio of our boost to our drive is better. And that's why we have a little bit more power here. So this is very convenient for me here. I have a dyno, I have graphs. I can see, oh, this is a good spot to move it. This is when I should have my wastegate set right. You can do this on the street. There's things, there's keys you can know about, things you can do on the street. In a compound turbo system, the boost, once it gets going, should rocket to the top. You should have like your zero to 20 PSI, depending on your turbo systems, is gonna be the slow time. Once you're there, it's gonna be a rocket ship to whatever peak boost is, and then it'll slow from there. And so you can see here, look at peak boost here. See how fast peak boost rockets up here? Where this one was raising, look at this little little dotted blue line here. It's rising, and then it's slow, it's slow. So if you have a you know stockish size turbo on the manifold with a 400 series underneath it, and if your boost comes up and all of a sudden kind of pauses, like it rises kind of quick from you know five to 10 to 20, and then it just kind of hangs there for a minute and then slowly builds like crazy, that's a pretty good indicator. Your gate is opening too early. And so what I, an easy thing to do would be to just kind of close it quite a bit and go do some runs and back it off until you see that happen, then go a little bit tighter than that. So if it, if it, if, as long as it's not slowing down your, your rise and boost, you want the gate open. If it slows it down though, that's gonna be kind of a good key on it's not gonna work as well. So in here, the boost is obviously a big difference here on these two, but the power remains the same. I wanna now look at the interstage boost. Let's see what happens when we open up the wastegate. What does that do to that 48? Does it make a difference? Can we actually see it? All right, I have the interstage boost pulled up and this is very interesting to me to see how the wastegate really affects everything. Let's start with this red line here. This is the wastegate opening the most and you can see right here it's building quickly and then it opens right here. You'll also notice down here the interstage as soon as we're opening this gate the interstage starts to take off. This is the pressure being dumped in the 488 and so it's being driven harder so it's creating more pressure. But you can see pretty quickly it doesn't last and that's because even though we're driving it harder we still do not have enough energy in the system to drive it efficiently. It's just a little bit more. And so because of that, the total boost did not take off. We just traded spots. We went from the 351 to the 488. They're not working together. We're just trading spots where on this particular one here, the gate's still closed. And that means we're driving the 351 much, much harder. So the boost is taking off like a rocket, like you want it to do. And right here is interesting because right now the interstage boost is tied across all of them, right around 13 to 14 PSI interstage. Now remember, interstage boost is the pressure from the 488 pushing into the 351. And so right here, we're all around 13 to 14 PSI of, uh, interstage boost, but there's a huge difference in total boost. We're talking 26 with the gate being open versus 57, 54 with the gate being closed. And that's why our power numbers are so radically different here. This is The torque is gonna to be just dramatically different. The power is way harder because we're still using the system efficiently. We're driving that 351. What is interesting here is we can see these gates open. So this is the middle run, the middle dash. The gate opens here and sure enough what happens, go down here. When the gate opens, the same thing that happened here. The turbo starts going harder. So in this run, the 48 is now taking off. It's climbing faster than this run here. The gate is still closed. And that's because we're putting more energy into the 48. At this point, it's really nice because it's very efficient. So even though the 48 is taking off, we might be concerned because our boost has already peaked and is no longer taking off. It's, it's plateaued and dropping. But is that a concern? No, because we're making more power right here. The reason we're making more power is because we are dumping all of this drive. Look at this drive here. We're talking uh, 125 compared to 88 pounds of drive. That's a massive difference between these two. And the only difference in these runs is literally a wastegate setting. So because we're dumping all that drive, we're making a little more power. Uh, the reason it's not more a difference in power is because we are making more boost with the other one. So we're still in the realm of feasibility. But for optimization, I'm thinking at this point, I want to open the gate. And so this just carries on out here. The, the 48's eventually balance, uh, the, the gate being more open, this one's going to have less boost. This going to have more boost uh, following the trend of drive pressure. But this, the difference in drive pressure here is much greater than the difference in boost. Like look at right here. We have uh, 107 PSI of drive versus 81 on the on these two. So we have 30, 27 pounds of boost, 26 pounds of boost difference or a drive pressure difference, excuse me. 
The boost difference is 9, 71 versus 60. So you can see we're still making pretty much the same boost, but way less drive. That's a much happier ratio. That's the reason that these two graphs make pretty much the same power, even though the boost is radically different. So just with some simple tuning and some uh, trial and error, you can make your, your system run dramatically different. So anyways, kind of worth, worth doing. If you got compound turbos, you might want to spend some time uh, playing with your wastegate. Turbo tuner, the boost double also works not as well, but it does do something. Or a different boost control device. It's, it is worth time to tune in your wastegate because it does radically affect how your uh, systems work. So on this setup, I'm not trying to teach you guys that this is what you have to do with your system as far as tuning it this way. I'm just saying you need to find out and tune it and experiment. Different turbo systems react different ways. And some turbo systems open the gate earlier, maybe better, maybe it's way too tight. You just gotta experiment and find out. It's worth your time. On this particular setup, the 351 with the 488, it needed the gate closed a lot more than we thought. But when we close it too much, obviously you can see the power was good, but the heat was high. This is drive pressure. We didn't have AGT readings on this particular run because our cable wasn't long enough, but I guarantee you that this run here was hotter than this run here. With all the extra pressure, you have a lot of pumping losses. There's more strain on components. Get the maximum power you can with the lowest amount of drive pressure. That's a surefire way to win. Okay guys, this is my Cummins cart and this is a single turbo application with nitrous. I didn't do a ton of testing on this particular setup. More so I just was concerned if I had enough gate at all. Uh, I have a single uh, 50 millimeter gate on this particular vehicle. And I think when I add nitrous compared to this, I'm gonna need to add a second gate, which I'm going to do. So my concern, like I said, is do I have enough gate? And so I wanted to do some testing there. So this is a run I wanna show you stuff. So first thing I wanna talk about is boost to drive pressure ratios. It's very common to the question if I talk about a turbo, hey, we're testing this new turbo or this new, or something's going on, or even other people say, well, what's your boost to drive pressure ratio? The problem with that question is, is what RPM are we talking about? Drive pressure to boost pressure ratios are highly dependent on engine RPM. A turbo or turbo system might work amazingly well at 2000 RPM, but by 3500 RPM is way out of source. So you need to size your turbo to work in the RPM range you want to operate in. So if it's a tow truck, you keep your turbos kind of small, but don't expect it to be amazing at 4,000 RPM. It's designed to be amazing at 2,000 RPM. So you really need to know where you want to operate. And this is a really good uh, graph to illustrate that. So this is my uh, GT55. I'm running a little bit of spray here. And this green line is my power. So this is a 3-4 shift. I run up in third gear. Right here, I shift it. And then it, the fourth gear loads it way better. And so that's where the big power comes in and it just carries a lot nicer. So this is like a 1400, mid 1400 horsepower run. But look at here, look at your boost to drive. So these RPMs are for fourth gear, but I'm in third gear. I'm shifting this thing around 5,000, 5,200 RPM. And so probably here, I'm guessing this is around 48, 4,900 RPM is where my drive pressure uh, overcomes my boost. So right here, I'm at a high RPM and I think, oh man, I'm getting more drive than boost. That's not ideal for a race truck. But as soon as I shift, the drive drops with engine RPM. So down here, it's now uh, nice. Again, my boost is high, my drive is low. This is good for EGT control. This is good for power production. And it's awesome. But as RPM climbs, you see down here we're 4,400, 4,500, 46, 48, clear up to 5,000. Um, if I was gonna carry this to 5,200, 5,500 RPM, my drive would overtake my boost again. So this turbo is really freaking sweet from four to 5,000 RPM. It's like it's really sweet spot for a 55 on a six, uh, this is a six four Cummins, uh, but um, it works real well. And so um, I'm gonna pull up another run here where I did not do a three four shift, it's just a fourth gear pull. And let's take a look there. Okay, so this is the run I did, uh, this is the fourth gear run. And on this one I'm running some more nitrous. So it's a little bit leaner than it was before. And oftentimes when I go leaner, my drive to boost pressure ratios get better. I, in, the, in the Godfather, it'd be super lean and I'd have way more boost and drive. It's just, it's just interesting. So. Here you can see, uh, again, I'm under, my drive pressure is lower. I'm starting at 43 pounds of boost and 36 pounds of drive is pretty wild. And we get up to 84 pounds of boost up here, 85, yeah, PK 85 pounds of boost. Even here at 5,000 RPM, this one's really doing very well. This is holding that boost advantage over drive pressure, so it's making pretty good power. And you can see it's carrying pretty well. If these, if these things crossed right here, if this turbo was small and the boost was a lower drive here, this thing would be just nose diving. It'd be just dropping like a rock. As soon as the drive overcomes boost on this turbo, the power just falls. I mean, it has a little bit to this wastegate, but mostly just making sure it's opening 
because I have plenty of drive with the nitrous to run the turbo and a wide open 50 millimeter wastegate. Like I said, I'm thinking about going with some more nitrous in this, depending on how things go. I'll need two gates to control that because I don't want to overspeed the turbo. I mean, this is a single turbocharger. I'm making 85 pounds of boost. So it's pretty wild if you think about it. So anyway, these turbos, a lot of people say it's impossible for drive pressure to be lowering boost, but I've seen it over and over and over. It's totally possible. I, have, I do it all the time, and here's a great example of it. So I'm a big believer in, uh, in drive to boost pressure ratios. Just make sure you're comparing it for the RPM range you want to be in, because eventually, if I kept revving this thing out, this red line would overtake the boost line. I'd have more drive pressure than boost. It always happens. Your turbo so always work in a certain RPM range. And as long as you stick there, they'll work awesome. So when you're sizing turbos, keep in mind the RPM range you want it to be most efficient in. A race truck, I want it very efficient at high, high RPM. A street truck, tow truck, opposite is true. Low RPM to mid RPM. So just decide what you want. And uh, you know, if you're a hot rod, a hot rod street truck is even different. If a hot rod street truck, I still need it to work at reasonable RPM. This thing, totally sucks under 4,000 RPM. And it's a dog, like this thing doesn't even live under 4,000 RPM. So I do not recommend you go out and put a GT55 on the manifold for your truck on the street. It'd be wild every once in a while if you had the guts to get that speed up, but it'll just blow your tires off everywhere. You need a track to hold this kind of power. So that's why I put this as the large turbo in my truck Ruby, the my daily driver, I have a 467, which is a mid-level turbo, which works great on that engine. But I still get the big power of the GT55. So anyway, guys, I hope this was interesting to you. I always like looking at data, looking at numbers. If you haven't played your wastegate settings, I highly recommend it. Go play with it. See if you can make that truck run even better.